ask you today, have you ever experienced perfection? Have you ever seen something that's perfect, saw something that's perfect, called something perfect? Like, for instance, a newborn baby. Have you ever seen that newborn baby and just said, oh, he or she is so perfect, just a perfect little baby, right? Or a, a sunset over Puget Sound. There's been quite a few that I've said, oh, that is a perfect sunset. What a beautiful moment. What an awesome sunset, right? Perfection. Or, uh, you know, she or he has the perfect body. You guys ever said that? Yeah. He or she has yeah. the perfect body. Just amazing, just six pack abs, all that stuff. But, but let me ask you, are any of these things actually perfect? Really perfect? Yes. Hmm. Completely perfect? Come on. Any new parent w would tell you that, that they love their child, but there's all the pooping and the crying and the keeping you awake at night, and, and that's far from perfect. Yeah. And not to mention, when that kid grows older, and they hit the terrible twos, they ain't gonna be perfect no more to any parent, right? <laughs> or a sunset could be perfect, but even the most beautiful sun sunset can be ruined uh, by an obstruction, by, by something in the way, and, and not to mention that to some extent, man-made pollutants cause brilliant sunsets and help and enhance sunsets. And, and that person having the perfect body could easily be made imperfect by one pimple. All of us have experienced that in high school. The perfect hair day ruined by one tiny, tiny little thing. And not to mention that some of us aren't a big fan of implants and Botox anyways. So there's nothing that we really see in this world that's perfect, and yet we have an idea of perfection. We have this concept of perfection. And so how is it that if we've never experienced anything that's perfect, we've never seen anything that's perfect, that, that we understand what perfection is, that we have some measure of Perfection. Philosophy would tell us that, that if we have a concept of perfection, it's because there is something out there that is perfect. And, and today I want to tell you about that perfect thing and that perfect someone. And I want to talk to you about this man named Jesus who was perfect. And after I'm done, I'm going to give you the chance to respond to what I've said. But first of all, this here is a Bible. If you've never read it, I recommend it. It's a true story, and it's God's story. It's amazing, uh, the things that happen in here, and, and it tells us so much about the world as it is. And this Bible tells us about this perfect person named Jesus. And in Hebrews 4, 15, it says this, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. And Jesus came to this earth, and, and he lived a human life, but he never sinned, he never made a mistake, he was perfect all through that, because he was God, and he is God. And, and in his life, he, he, he was fully human, he lived this human life, and, and because of the life he lived, because of this perfect life he lived, he was killed for it, and he died, he was dead. But then he proved that he was perfect because he conquered death. That even though he was dead, the great equalizer is death, right? All of us will die. That is the great equalizer. Well, even in the great equalizer, Jesus proved that he's above that. He was raised from the dead. Amen. And he proved that he has power over death. And he has power over sin. He has power over darkness. All these things. And it is in this resurrection that we can find hope. That, that I find hope. It's what tells me that I, have, that I have something in my future, that I have a life worth living, that I have some kind of hope for my life, and that I too can conquer sin, not because of who I am, but because of who He is, and because of what He has done. And you too can follow Him, and you can have that same hope for your life. Now, some of us, we might be intimidated by this thought. I'm standing here, and I'm telling you that there's a perfect God, and then I'm telling you that you should follow that perfect God. And I know what you may be thinking. You may be thinking, I am not perfect. How could I possibly follow a perfect person, let alone a perfect God? That a lot of people think that they have to have it all together before they can follow Jesus. Or they think that they have to have a perfect life before they can come to church, before they can give their life to Christ. They think that this perfect God could never love such an imperfect human, such a messed up person. Well, let me tell you about my life. 
I had been in church my whole life. I had done the Sunday school thing, all that stuff, and, and I was good at playing the church game. I was good at doing that, living two lives, one person on Sunday, another person the rest of the week, all that stuff. And I knew about Jesus. They talked about him all the time at church, and I knew who he was. I knew about facts about Jesus, but I didn't <coughs> really know him. It's like when you were in high school, there was that hottie cheerleader girl, right? That you knew who she was, but you didn't know her, let's be honest, right? But for the ladies, it was that, that hunky quarterback who volunteered at the old people's home and just loved his family so much. And, you know, you knew who he was, but y'all didn't know him. Come on, be honest. And so that's how it was with me and Jesus, that, that I knew who Jesus was, but I didn't know him. I didn't have a relationship with him, and I, and I certainly didn't follow him. And that was because I thought that I had to be perfect to follow Jesus. I thought that I had to get my life in order before I could follow Jesus. And, you know, I was just too messy to do that. I was just too messy to be perfect. And I had tried to do this on my own. I had tried to clean up my own life and to do all these things, but I never could make it. I could never do it and never achieve that. It was never possible for me to be perfect. I always fell off that wagon. But then something happened in my life, and it changed me forever. I went to my first ever church camp, and I thought it was going to be filled with all these perfect little church people who were weird because they didn't struggle with the same things I struggled with, and they didn't have a life because all they did was, was just read the Bible and live their perfect little Christian lives. And I found that it was quite the contrary, and that was very far from the truth. And when that speaker got up and he told me of a God who loved me just because of who he was and just because of who I was, and it didn't matter if I was perfect, it didn't matter what I was, what I was doing or how messy I was, I knew that I wanted a relationship with that person, with that Jesus. And I experienced Jesus' love for the first time, and I realized that I didn't have to be perfect to follow Jesus, that I didn't have to be perfect in order to give my life to him. That God didn't accept me because of anything that I had done, because of any of my merit. But God accepted me because of who he is. And the Bible tells us in another passage, Romans 5, 8, it says, But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So this salvation, this hope, it's not based on anything that I can do. It wasn't based on my class standing or my social standing, any of these things. It was based on God's love. And I made, to follow, I made a commitment to follow Jesus in that moment. And even then, it didn't make my life perfect. It didn't instantly transform me. I, I've heard stories of people who gave their lives to Christ and they were on the crack pipe and the next day they had no even, even desire to touch that anymore. They were no longer addicted to the crack pipe or whatever. And that wasn't the way it was for me. I wasn't addicted to crack, but, you know. Uh, but I didn't have this instant transformation. My life wasn't made perfect instantly. I still had all these things that I had to wade through, but now I had Jesus, perfect Jesus, there to help me and to give me his strength. That that same power that conquered the grave and conquered sin could live inside me and could give me that hope and that strength to press on. And I had him to help me and to give me that strength. And so today, I'm not asking you to become perfect. I'm not asking you to be a perfect person. I'm simply asking you if you want to make the same choice that I did to follow Jesus, that he loves you and he died on the cross for you, even though you're not perfect, that no matter how messy you are, God loves you and God can accept you. And he wants to start a relationship with you right now. And so if you are tired of trying to live on your own strength, try, tired of trying to clean up your life and do all these things on your own, then I'm asking you today to give your life over to Christ and that same strength and that same power that conquered the grave, that conquered sin, can live inside of you and give you strength. Amen. And so I urge you today to make that decision. And we'll have prayer members up here for you to speak with and, uh, and they can help you along this journey. But let's pray. Uh, Lord God, we thank you for being the absolute perfect God of this universe. We thank you for what you've done for us, for conquering sin and conquering the grave, and for loving us in spite of our imperfections. Lord, I pray for those people in this room who, uh, who are making decisions for the first time.
God, I pray that you would, uh, that you would stir up in their hearts the desire.